readers, I'm Jessica Quinn from Cup of Books and welcome to Comics Corner. I know it's been a while since I've talked about comics on this channel, but I am so ready for this video. I have some comics, I have my mug, I... wait, who wrote on my mug? Seriously? Way to be professional, people. Okay, w what does this say? Whosoever holds this mug, should they be worthy? shall possess the power of Thor? This is totally, wait a second, that's all I get. Two seconds in the costume, seriously? Last month, Thor The Dark World hit theaters in the US and because I am fashionably late to pretty much everything I do, today we're talking about the mighty Thor. Yes, a month and a half since the movies premiered in the US, we are talking about Thor. Thor, of course, is the god of thunder from Norse mythology. However, in Marvel Comics, he is the superhero god of thunder from Norse mythology. Really, I'm not making this up. Starting with the classics, I want to recommend Journey into Mystery, issue 83, which is Thor's first appearance in comics, and The Avengers, issue 1, which is The Avengers' first appearance as a team in comics. Admittedly, I am mostly recommending Journey into Mystery, issue 83, because it is Thor's first appearance in comics. It does have some entertaining moments. My personal favorite was when the evil rock aliens are showing off their superpowers and how they work on Earth. It read like an evil training montage, and that was fantastic. Personally, I feel like the Marvel movies could use some evil training montages for their villains, particularly if they set these evil training montages to Eye of the Tiger or Girls Just Want to Have Fun. I recommend The Avengers issue 1 because it is a joy to read. Even after all these years, it is so much fun to watch these superheroes team up for the first time, and it's just so hilarious. And this is partly because it's dated, but partly because it's just so much fun. There's good humor in here, there's unintentional humor, it's just, it's just laughs all around. Minus the way the Wasp gets treated by some of her teammates, I generally enjoyed everything about this comic. I particularly like the fact that the reason the Avengers formed is because the Fantastic Four were too busy to be bothered to chase Loki around. That is the perfect origin story for the Avengers, in my opinion. If you haven't checked out this comic already, you really should. Next, I want to recommend a short-lived series called Thor the Mighty Avenger. This charming all-ages comic takes place out of the regular Marvel continuity. It is a retelling of Thor's superhero origin, blending the film franchise canon with the comic book canon in order to create a familiar but new story. Sure, if you're familiar with the character, this may not be the comic for you because it retreads a lot of old territory, but it has so much heart. It has likable characters, really fun superhero team-ups, and the art is just gorgeous. It's very clean and simple. Definitely a great series to share with younger readers or with people who are only familiar with the movie versions. Also, if you're ever able to get your hands on the Captain America Mighty Thor team up that was put out by the same people for Free Comic Book Day this year, you should definitely check it out. It's a really fun issue that involves time travel and Loki and Camelot and yeah, it's fun. I'd be remiss in not recommending the run of the Thor series written by JMS. This run is credited as reviving the character, both in the literal sense, because Thor had been dead in the comics previously, and in the figurative sense, because it made people interested in Thor and the realm of Asgard again. This comic is just brimming with creativity, and what this run does well, it does really well. I love the interactions between the Asgardian gods and the people of Earth as they're both trying to figure each other out. I love the back and forth between Thor and his human alter ego Donald Blake. I love every scene the Warriors 3 are in. Seriously, they're hilarious, as they should be. And to top it off, the artwork is phenomenal. It's so well drawn. A lot of people recommend this run as a place to start out reading Thor. It is technically supposed to be a reboot. 
it's not. It's more of a continuation. So know that going in. You might need to open Wikipedia and do your homework. That being said, I do not think that this run is perfect. I wasn't really feeling the design of the Frost Giants. They have this tribal aesthetic that I find problematic given that they're portrayed as these savage, bloodthirsty, inhuman creatures. It just has some really unfortunate implications that I don't think the artist really thought through. I disliked Loki's arc as Lady Loki and I intensely disliked Lady Sif's storyline. If you weren't already aware, Lady Sif is the goddess of war in Asgard and she is a on-again, off-again romantic interest of the character of Thor. She gets treated so poorly in this run and yet when her storyline is wrapped up more or less I never really felt like the comic acknowledged what she had gone through and for me that didn't work. Okay what do we got here? Appetite of Volshog, no thanks. Sandril, no. She'll possess the awesome hat of Hogan. Well, well, that's a maybe. Why do why do I have a comb in my cupboard? Wait, there's writing here. Shall possess hair of Loki. Oh no. no. I've got to have some sort of magical object that will turn me into a really, really awesome superhero. This this looks promising. Whosoever holds this mug, should they be worthy, shall possess the beauty, badassery and general awesomeness of the Lady Sith. Oh, I could work with that. Mm -hmm. 